The first case we're going to present to you is a 59-year-old female patient with a history of abdominal pain. EGD showed the incidental finding of a submucosal lesion in the distal stomach. And Rob Haas will now present the EUS of that case to you. Okay, well, uh, good morning from uh, Hamburg, and uh, certainly I want to add my welcome uh, to all of you who are in St. Petersburg. It's, uh, it's a really great pleasure for me to be part of uh, the Congress, uh, this uh, 18th uh, EUS meeting, and uh, I'm delighted to be here. I think we want to get uh, straight to the teaching, so uh, we will go right to the case. Uh, it is my general uh, practice on a submucosal mass in the uh, stomach to take a brief look with a regular endoscope. And uh, my reason for doing so uh, is mainly to, to palpate the, uh, the lesion. And you can see here that uh, this is umbilicated. Uh, it's located in the antrum. And then I have just some closed biopsy forceps. And I like to see if this is, uh, number one, if it's soft or firm and number two, whether it's mobile over the uh, gastric wall or not. And you can see here that it's relatively soft and that it is mobile over the uh, gastric wall. So this suggests that this lesion is located in the submucosa. It is not attached to the muscularis propria. Otherwise, we would see the entire uh, gastric wall move. So my differential diagnosis is now uh, narrowed down a little bit. Uh, this is probably uh, number one on my list would be a pancreatic rest. Although those can be a little bit firm, they're typically pedunculated and they're located in the submucosa. A carcinoid tumor uh, is also a possibility, although they're usually firm. And if you see a carcinoid or you think it could be a carcinoid, I recommend doing mucosal biopsies. Carcinoids begin in the deep mucosa and therefore are usually diagnosable by regular mucosal biopsies. So I just wanted to show you the, um, the characteristics of this lesion. And so we're going to, to pull the scope out and uh, we're going to switch to the ultrasound scope. So uh, just a few things uh, on imaging submucosal masses uh, wherever they are. We've chosen, number one, to use a radial echo endoscope. I think in this day and age, you could actually do either one. If this was large and if it was located uh, in, likely located or emanating from the muscularis propria, then we might very well go with a linear array echo endoscope primarily because we might, doing, might be doing FNA. So I think either one is possible. We've chosen a radial in this particular uh, example. Secondly, there are two techniques that you can use to image it. One is to fill the stomach with water, uh, and that is uh, sort of the water-filled stomach technique. Uh, the other one is to just use the balloon inflation and to suck out all the air from the, uh, from the stomach. So those are the two uh, mechanisms that we'll use. And I think we're ready, uh, so we'll go ahead and pass the scope. I have, um, I am using a new, um, it's the Olympus Future EUS Center. So that's the, the equipment that I'm using. Uh, maybe the cameraman can show it. I think all of you will have a chance to see it. Um, in the, uh, auto, in the exhibition area. It will drive both a linear as well as a radial echo endoscope. So we've intubated the patient. We're just uh, moving now down uh, into the stomach. It's a little bit of water. Advance the scope and there's the uh, lesion in the foreground. And then I think uh, what I generally like to do is just inflate the balloon a little bit. The main reason for that is just that it, it shows me where the transducer is. And then you can uh, move the transducer right against the, uh, the lesion. And then once you think it's against the lesion, 
Then as I torque to the right, you can see that it moves the transducer toward the lesion. And that helps me when I'm uh, determining a wear on the ultrasound image, the 360 degree image, exactly where the lesion is. So if I torque right, I go into the lesion. So now we'll go to the ultrasound image. I'm just aspirating air now. And uh, here's the image. I'll suck out some more air. And then as I say, if I go right on the right left, or right torque, it typically is toward the lesion. So now I'm going to move back and forth a little bit. And one thing that, uh, that is present, I suspect that the um, lesion is down here, in this area here. But what I'm finding is that I'm sort of up against it, uh, which can uh, oftentimes happen. So what I'm going to be doing is putting some water uh, into the lumen to try to get some separation. There you can see some water going in. Bertrand, Dr. Napoleon is helping me. He's an expert on, uh, on helping with water infusion. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to try to refine the lesion. So when you're imaging in the, in the uh, stomach, the key is to get perpendicular to where you're imaging. And I think maybe that we're beginning to see the lesion uh, here, in this area here. And now what I can do is uh, just show you the bottom part of the screen and then we'll uh, increase the range a little bit. And now we can begin uh, imaging. So um, we can freeze it now. So for me on submucosal lesions, the key is uh, what I call a transition zone. So uh, here, um, you can't trace it very well, but this is a border echo right here. This is the mucosa. This is the submucosa. And this is the muscularis propria. So this is what I call the transition zone between the normal gastric wall and the lesion that we're seeing. So I think as we saw on the uh, examination, the muscularis propria is not involved. Uh, and this is sort of a inhomogeneous lesion emanating from the submucosa. It's a little bit heterogeneous, uh, Bertrand. And uh, so we'll just uh, keep uh, imaging here a little bit. Um, again, uh, here is the mucosa that's overlying the lesion. And this is the lesion itself. So it looks like it's emanating completely from the submucosa. There's intact mucosa overlying it. And that would go along with a negative biopsy, the prior biopsies. And, and uh, ah, so Berton thinks maybe there's a small channel here. And if this represented, obviously, a ductal structure, then that would uh, be a strong indication for a pancreatic rest. It's not a lipoma. Uh, it's got echopoor areas within it, so it's not, it's, it's, uh, not a lipoma. And again, here is uh, this overlying normal mucosa with sort of heterogeneous uh, lesion itself. So I think, Bertrand, I am leaning toward a uh, pancreatic rest. Again, I'm seeing uh, completely normal overlying mucosa, and I'm seeing no involvement in the, uh, in the, in the muscularis propria, and uh, I'm seeing sort of a, an echo-poor heterogeneous lesion, maybe with a ductal structure, as, uh, as Bertrand pointed out. Ah. Yes. So, so um, 
this uh, new, the future EUS Center uh, has some very, very nice uh, components to it. We have uh, gone to a, 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 an enhanced uh, image mode. You can see it uh, here on the right. This is an enhanced resolution mode. And I think you can appreciate the, uh, the improved resolution. Maybe there's a little bit of a cystic area here, Bertrand, maybe. This, this uh, instrument also has um, tissue harmonics, it all, and it also has uh, elastography as part of the functions. It runs an elect, uh, a radial as well as a, a linear array echo endoscope, so it's a multifunctional uh, type of an instrument. So again, I'm looking for some ductal structures in here, uh, Bertrand, and uh, maybe there are some ductal structures here. Rob, this is yes. Mike Wallace here. Uh, I want to congratulate you on a, a beautiful demonstration. I, I think sometimes we don't appreciate how difficult this type of image can be to obtain, especially in the antrum. Um, my question for you is, how are you using EUS to decide how to treat or even whether you should treat uh, this lesion? Can you think uh, forward now what you're going to do uh, are you going to remove it? Are you going to biopsy it? Or are you going to do surveillance of this lesion? Right. So, I mean, uh, <clears throat> that's a, a key question, Mike, uh, to image uh, alone uh, without having an impact on, on decision making, I think is, is probably uh, not what we want to be doing. I think for me, uh, it's, a, it's a, a decision process. I cannot tell you with 100% certainty exactly what this is. Uh, but I can tell you that the mucosal biopsies are negative, and so I'm comfortable, and this looks like it has a completely intact mucosa over it, so I'm comfortable this is not a carcinoid. And the carcinoid would be the one um, lesion, if you will, uh, that we might uh, very much want to remove, that we wouldn't survey uh, in this case. Um, uh, so I'm comfortable that this is not a carcinoid. Uh, I am also comfortable that it is not a, a leiomyoma emanating from the muscularis mucosa. I'm comfortable that it's not a, uh, a gist uh, emanating from the, the muscularis propria. So I'm down to um, uh, primarily, I think, uh, pancreatic rest. There clearly is a, um, a cystic area here. So I think based upon that differential, I would not remove it, um, and I uh, will continue to survey it, uh, is would be my recommendation on the basis of the, of the imaging. Follow, to follow this question, Rob, what would be the indication for removal of, let's say, during surveillance or during your first investigation? What would be the indication for removal of such kind of aberrant pancreas? Uh, um, I'm not sure that there's a good reason to remove heterogeneous pancreas. Um, uh, so uh, I, uh, I, I doubt uh, that I would remove that. The only reason I would remove it is if I don't know what it is, maybe if it's expanding in size on surveillance, um, something of that nature uh, might be an indication to remove it. Um, but I think, uh, and if it was, if I thought that it was a possibility that it was a carcinoid, uh, I think that would be another reason to remove it. Uh, this lesion is, um, uh, is not so big uh, here. Where are the measurements? Uh, So uh, it's about to 12 millimeters in diameter, uh, the lesion is. So um, it's not, not, not so big. Thank you. One more. Rob? Yes. Kida, Kida speaking. Hi, Peter. And uh, uh, from the viewpoint of the Japanese endoscopist, and uh, this is uh, in Japan, the, uh, such a typical uh, ectopic pancreas case is, will be hollow up. Yes. In Japan, in general. Ah, Kira-san. Yeah, so uh, 
this, this is, I would agree with uh, uh, Akita-san. I think that, uh, again, this is heterogeneous. It's in the submucosa. There are clearly some area, cystic areas within it. I think this is um, almost certainly a pancreatic rest. Uh, the patient is asymptomatic. Uh, there's no uh, symptoms involved. And so, um, to me, uh, this is an indication for uh, just surveillance. Um, I, I even think that if we survey this a couple of times, maybe, and there's no change or, or whatever, then maybe even I would be confident enough to, to suspend surveillance altogether. Rob, okay. but more of a theoretical question here, but in, in the event that you are less certain as to the cause uh, and you wanted to do some tissue sampling, what is your preferred method of sampling? Would you FNA, do you use a bite-on-bite -bite biopsy technique or some other method for these subepithelial tumors? Yeah, that's a great, a great question, Mike. Um, and I think that uh, there may be some differences in opinion. I'm, I'm curious to know what the, the panel would think. Uh, I have not been very successful in doing EUS-guided aspiration of small submucosal masses. So my experience is not very good for, uh, for an FNA. Uh, the needle, uh, because it's mobile, you can't, uh, you can't get the needle to actually penetrate back and forth in the lesion uh, in order to, to get cells. It just sort of moves uh, with you. Uh, so I prefer uh, to do sort of a biopsy on biopsy. And then finally, if, if I really am concerned about it, uh, if I think that uh, this is really something that uh, might potentially be difficult, then I would probably lift it based upon the, the imaging here, lift it uh, with a submucosal injection and do probably a, a resection. I just remove it. Okay. So Mike and uh, Kisan, the audience, thank, you, thank you very, very much. I think uh, Thomas is ready for the next case. So great to be with you.